Eels defeating the Sharkies, 34 to 22 there. I was a little bit of a worry with my tips that I thought with the guys returning that the Eels might get up in this one, especially after how poorly the Sharks played last week. And it looks like they're on a bit of a slide, unfortunately, now at the Sharkies. And we'll be you know, worried picking them going forward, especially without Nico. And yeah, just defensively, they're not, as, not anywhere near as strong as they were for the first 10 rounds of the season. So pretty frustrating at that. But... The return of Moses meant there are a lot more points in this game and the Eels were a lot better. So the prospects for a lot of these guys actually increases dramatically there. Will Penasini, it just happens every single year that he plays with Mitch Moses. He scores really, really well and he's down at sort of a you know low, low to mid-30s average without him. And then as soon as he returns, back to a 67 there with a one-on-one -on -one really important try there for them early on in the game. Got past Iro for one of his only misses of the evening. And yeah, everyone else, Ronaldo and all the other boys that couldn't tackle him there as well. To go along with that, six tackle breaks and three offloads with his big tackle numbers and meters gained as well. So massive for Penasini and obviously a cheaper center that you might want to grab next week that plays 14, 17 and 19 there as well. Junior Palo there with a 63, a very damaging try as well. He broke through so many tackles and they couldn't not tackle him there. So yeah, seeing that, he should probably score more of those tries he got through like five people, so if you can get him one-on-one, -on -one, I think he should be scoring plenty across uh, you know, the seasons that he plays. Mitch Moses, for those who grabbed him, he did end up with one try assist there. And where... Oh, they didn't give him the line break in the end. Okay, so line break assist, try assist there, big run meters on that one there. And yeah, obviously the goals, good kick meters, couple of false dropouts, they, they surely needed him. That's for sure there. He had a negative 18 in the end, so he could have gone mid-60s with you know, normal negatives that he would have ended up with. But uh, for those that did grab Moses, it worked out really well. It's really worked out for most of the guys that you would have purchased coming into this game. And Cartwright was that next guy on the list of 57 in that 75 minutes there. So for him, back to some of his really good scoring ways in four offloads to hand, good run meters and you know solid tackle numbers as always for him in that mid to you know, high 30s there for a 57. So if you did grab onto him, looks like he's uh, feeling a lot better and they go right a lot more when Moses is in the side and he can get uh, he can get plenty of work as well for Cartwright. And it's very much the same with Kelman Tuolungi. He ended up playing the full 80 in this one and he's showing his offload, offloading ability as well to go along with three tackle breaks, solid tackle numbers there and only a few negatives there for Kelma. So good stuff on that front. A big score for Kennedy as well, 57. Not really relevant at this stage. He's all the way down at 325. So he's, you know, biggest score of the year there. The big news here and the big annoying one for myself was that of Brendan Hands coming in and playing like he did last year. And for some reason, they decided to drop him for Joey Lussick. And then they started off with Joey Lussick for the beginning of the season. And yeah, obviously, it's a good timing for Hands to come in with Moses and Gutho back. But... He just offers a little bit more there and defensively doesn't miss as many tackles. As you can see here, 53 makes for three misses. And we saw last year he scored really, really well. And we, are, we all, most of us owned him before he got dropped there, kind of you know, out of nowhere when he eventually got dropped in the team last year. And he's finally made his way back into this side. So if you did need a half or a hooker there, it really worked out for you. And there's about 180 odd from the top thousand that bought him, which really hurts my you know ability to, to catch up to these guys. But... The positive here for me was the fact that, and, and a few of you guys out there, that, that Atkinson ended up getting 51. A lovely try assist early, and then that line break try with a few tackle breaks there. And, oh, God, it got close there with Gutho fighting for that ball uh, to stay up, and he eventually wriggled out of it and put that ball down. So only the negative four there in just those two missed tackles was really, really helpful with 15 tackles for him there. So very, very happy to be a, an owner of Atkinson in this very important week. Like last week, he got the 30-odd, or low 30s, 31 there, into a 51 this week, and then that 60-odd when we bought him. So the Atkinson trade-in has worked out pretty well. We've got him for this week. I wonder if Hines plays next week, does Atkinson keep his spot in the side, or is it Braden Trindle? Just based off this alone, setting up one, and obviously you know, he's at the end of a backline shift, sort of in the center position by that stage, uh, and then a, a try himself. Yeah, he may have worked his way into that permanent role, which, you know, I think at the moment it's probably up in the air 50-50 at this stage. Dylan Brown, save your score, that's for sure. He's on 24 before this try, but picked up sort of four, three or four tackle breaks and you know, 15, 20 meters and that try with the line break was good stuff. We know that his meters gain were going to drop, but missed tackles are up a bit high at four. 
and then 144 run meters without any offloads as well. So look, 50 is probably what you're going to expect from him going forward. That's you know, pretty generally the average that he gets with Moses in the side. So just keep that in mind. There's a few people blowing up about his score and they're like, oh, I'm getting rid of him next week. He's one of the best halves in the game right now. And that's not a trade that you can afford to make in my opinion. But thankfully he saved that score from being a low one which he has done in other weeks. But the good thing with this team is now that they're playing better, he's going to have more opportunities to score tries and set, set tries up on that left edge. And yeah, obviously score tries himself like you saw here, which is a fairly, not, not a very rare occurrence, him going over in that fashion. So yeah, there's a lot of scores there, 50 plus, about 10 there at that. With Sione Katoa with a 49 with a double for him. Ronaldo, much better game with good run meters, good tackle breaks. That's try that he set up for... Bull Kennedy was very, very impressive. Wilton, a much better score of 47 for owners of him. Solid. Same with Ramian, a 47. Very happy with that. Williams end up taking over the McInnes role for a 47 in 59 minutes. Bailey Simonson picked up a try there. And yeah, a good 43 score if anyone was looking at him at that mid-range price. Kale Iro for all of us owners. 27 tackles, three misses. Was pretty good at that front. Three tackle breaks, 166 meters gained. Still finding it very difficult to score a try or get a try assist. But thankfully, his base stats are really, really strong and we can hold him for a little while now. A sad thing in this one that for Atkinson owners, it worked out great. He got 51, but he you know, didn't get any favors because Trinnell comes back in this side. He takes the main kicking role. So 199 meters for Atkinson, 530 for Trindle with three goals as well. So he ended up taking over the goal kick from Atkinson as well. So pretty frustrating at that. He probably lost out on 15 to 20 points in that scenario and uh yeah could have gone really really good but yeah still very happy with Atkinson score but yeah it would have been a little bit nicer and a little bit better if we can get some more as always we're greedy Rudolph with 37 Sivo with 37 with a double not ideal at all run meter is still pretty down Hazelton at 35 so he's his scores have dropped off the last two weeks and he'll start to lose cash now I think that he's still clearly a hold but yeah just hasn't been as damaging as he was in that first couple of months of footy Britton Nicara, this is the, the saddest one of the lot because there see, always seems to be someone that really drops off at certain points of the year and they just don't look themselves. And last year was actually Dylan Edwards. Nicara was doing pretty well up and down, sort of, you know, mid, mid to high 50s into a 40-odd kind of thing. But he's just missing too many tackles. They're surprisingly a little bit lower than normal with the three missed tackles. And when he's not making big run meters at 56 there, he's never going to score well unless he's scoring tries. And he just hasn't had Nico there enough next to him or when he has it's been up against a tougher opponent and he's not been able to get that try and then he had that one game where he did get that try against a lesser opponent there so he's he's the edwards of this season so far doing really well last year obviously he started the year poor and then had that sort of two to three games there that that really brought people back in and then he end up ends up getting a couple of 30s in a row which is pretty frustrating there for sure i still think you hold but it's a it's a frustrating hold that's for sure Russell with 31, a couple of tries for him helped. And then Gutho's 30 there on return. He looked good, obviously ran for 279 metres, helped him get to this win, obviously with his leadership in defence as well. And then you've got Sean Lane, 26 and 35. He really needs to be removed from this team, like from your team. He's, he's getting minutes in the middle, but uh, nothing special there. That's for sure. And Ogden Kafusi, this is the only kind of worry about getting these mid-range type of guys. Both him and Tommy Hazelton have dropped off an absolute cliff the last few weeks, Kafusi was thirty, you know, under forty, and then he's gone twenty-five in this one, which is pretty gross. So, yeah, that's the story with both of them. It's not nice, and and hopefully he does get back to some bigger minutes and some better scores. Same for that with Tommy Hazelton. Obviously, got one game tonight as well, guys. The Knights up against the Dogs, so plan to your fantasy relevance there. Ten p.m. game for for us here, and for those in New Zealand as well. Super duper late, but uh, yeah, that's the the standard there. That uh, a lot of the Australians we. Um, Take that for granted, that's for sure. We even think our one's late, and they've got two hours later than that. And then just a quick one on the Supercoach side. Penasini, 95, was good. Obviously, Sivo, owners, 81, was good. Moses, anyone who grabbed him this week, picked up a 76. Kelma Tualangi with a 74 at his cheap price there of 291 after gaining 41k last week. If he jumped on that, happy days. You've got Brown there, he's 88, so very, very impressed with that. In the end, it was kind of slowish going. He had a random line break in there, which they didn't credit on... Fantasy, but they did on Supercoach there. Gutho with a 70. Cartwright back to some of his better work with a 63. Uh, Pre-offload, pre you know, updates. 
Brennan Hands with a 59, so that was very ideal. Obviously, big tackle numbers, a couple of runs and tackle breaks there as well, so that was good. You know, definitely someone that you can look at at 209K, which is just ridiculously cheap. And then you've got Shawnee Lane with a 32. So, yeah, hold him in the head to head team here for the final week, most likely. Uh, maybe we get through round 14 with him, and then he's a Gornski, but yeah, he needs to be out of this side as a bench middle, that's for sure. And then on the Sharky side, you've got Kantoa and Malatalo both doing really well there, 71 and 89. Atkinson is 77 for those that did jump on in recent weeks. Kennedy finally a decent score. Kale Ira with a 55. Solid enough. We'll take it in this week. There'll definitely be a top 13 scorer. The big worry here was the fact that, uh, and I didn't even get to speak about it in fantasy because he didn't even register as a player, but Blaze Talungi with a zero and not even you know, gracing the field. So yes, the team did really well and they didn't need him. They didn't have any injuries of, of note that uh, you know, could bring him on the park. But unfortunately, if that's the case, that he's not even going to play and he's named again on the bench next week it needs to be he needs to be yeeted out of the side it's yeah it's not much you can do it's super frustrating hopefully you were able to loop him uh, or you did sell him i did see a few people that that were able to sell then that was great i ended up holding him just because as an extra player in super coach and yeah he didn't even grace the field with a zero in that one which is why he's blanked out down there super frustrating he'll be sold next week it, you know with a negative break even it'll be nice to get him on the park that's for sure and, and yeah helped out Yes, yeah, and then trade him next week with an extra 30 or 50k in our bank. But yeah, Iroh 55 is really solid. The worries about Hazleton and obviously Kafusi are the same on this front. And then Nicaragua with 38, if you brought him in uh, in the last bunch of weeks, super frustrating if you brought him in this week. Double frustrating because you would have seen what he's been able to demonstrate, and it's not great at this point. There's definitely other better options in Dylan Lucas in Aiken, these types of guys that you want to target instead. So that's the Thursday night game. We'll get into that Friday one tomorrow. Sorry, it's a little bit late, but uh, yeah, moving moving hotel and moving area today off the island onto the mainland at the Coral Coast. So there you go, guys. Happy to get that out to you. I wish you all the best of luck with this very fantasy relevant game tonight with the Knights and the Doggies.